But there was one ship that was to become more famous than any other. Yes, RMS Titanic. Launched in Belfast in 1911, it was the largest ship in the world. And a great British machine, until the captain, with great British incompetence, sailed it into an iceberg. Fortunately, inside Titanic, there was another great British machine. The device which made rescue possible and saved 700 lives was the ship's radio. As Titanic began to sink with 2,200 people on board, it sent out a distress call. To hear what the Titanic's distress signal sounded like, Tony Constable here is going to reproduce part of it. Go ahead, Tony. Coming through loud and clear. What did you actually say there? S-O-S. -S. Ah. Help. In the 1910s, radio was as revolutionary as the internet is today. Not all ships carried sets, but those that did mainly used British equipment like this, similar to the one on Titanic. In these early days of radio, you sent your messages using this key here as dots and dashes of Morse code. This controlled the device at the heart of the Titanic's transmitter, the spark generator. Every time the operator tapped a key, it created a short burst for a dot and a long burst for a dash. The spark sent a voltage pulse up to the ship's aerial, where it was transmitted as radio waves. Generating radio waves like this was easy. The hard part was detecting them. To pick up Titanic's distress call, radio operators on nearby ships relied on a device called a magnetic detector. There were other radio receivers at this time, but the magnetic detector was the first one that was robust enough to work at sea. It's this device that made ship's radio possible. It was based on a discovery made in Cambridge by the great physicist Ernest Rutherford. He discovered that a magnetically charged iron wire subjected to radio waves became demagnetized. At his Chelmsford factory in Essex, Guglielmo Marconi turned Rutherford's discovery into a working machine. Marconi's genius was coming up with this constantly moving loop of wire that automatically remagnetizes every time it passes these magnets. An incoming radio signal demagnetizes the wire, which is immediately remagnetized by the magnets so it can receive another signal. This constantly changing magnetism creates an electric current which the operator's headphones then transform into sound. Simple, really. And totally reliable, as long as you kept the clockwork mechanism wound up. When Titanic sent out her distress signal just after midnight, it was picked up by another passenger steamship, RMS Carpathia. But Carpathia was three and a half hours away, and by the time it arrived, it was too late to save most of the people on board. The sad part of this story is that another ship, the Californian, was even closer to the Titanic. However, the radio operator on the Californian had gone to bed for the night. And when the third officer popped into the radio room, just when Titanic was sending out her SOS signal, there was silence. He didn't notice that the clockwork drive of the magnetic detector had run down, and so he never heard Titanic's distress call. If he had only wound up the clockwork mechanism, he could have saved all 2,000 people on board. As it was, Rutherford's discovery of the magnetic detector and Marconi's use of it in the ship's wireless saved 700 lives. The dramatic rescue alerted the world to the importance of radio, and soon every ship would have one. The Titanic tragedy shocked a nation that in the 